Clodopop is aptly named because a portion of its vineyards are located near the Pope's castle and surrounded by walls. Clodopop has around 40 hectares of vineyards that are spread out amongst 30 different parcels. These parcels have varying soil types, including clay and limestone. By blending the fruit that's produced from these varying soil types, Clodopop is able to achieve wines with complexity and depth. Clodopop makes both a red wine and a white wine. The red wine typically consists of a blend that includes 65% Grenache, 20% Mourvedre, 10% Syrah, and 5% of other permitted grapes. Interestingly, however, Clodopop is one of the very few producers that uses all permitted grape varieties in both the red wine and their white wine. Clodopop is an extremely consistent producer and one that I generally consider buying every vintage. Both the red wine and the white wine can be outstanding. The red wine can often be purchased for around $100 a bottle, whereas the white wine costs a little bit less, maybe $80 or so. One of the reasons that Clodopop is so consistent is that it prides itself on its very low yields. They typically produce only about one-third to one-half of the fruit that's permitted by the Chateauneuf de Pop regulations. In terms of best vintages to keep an eye out for, with Clodopop, it's a fairly consistent producer, so you don't really have to be too concerned with vintages. They really haven't had a so-called off vintage since about 2014, and certainly the 2019 and 2020 vintages that you'll find in store shelves are both excellent, so you can buy those with confidence. And the one thing that I'll say with respect to the off vintages for producers like Clodopop is that I found that I still end up buying many of those wines because they sell for much lower prices, and also because that just typically means that you can enjoy the wines when they're younger and you don't need to age them as long. This varies a little bit for Chateauneuf du Pop compared to my approach for most regions, because my general approach is to load up on strong vintages and ignore weak ones. But with Chateauneuf, I found that I sometimes enjoy the off-vintage wines as well.